Hero, The Amazing Women in Digital Media, Volume 1. Volume 2 is tomorrow at 5.30. But um, I have to tell you a secret. I'm more excited about this one. Because I have a feeling these three ladies are going to give us some awesome tips, tricks, and stories. So I'm just completely ready. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves, and I'm going to let you start. Thank you. Um, I am the Opai Princess. I am a full-time content creator. My main medias are going to be on Twitch, YouTube, TikTok. Um, I also do some very fan service -y type work as well. Cosplay, um, lots of gaming and, you know, vlogs as well as just chatting with my community. Um, yeah. Okay, my name is Hanako Ritz, and I am the creator and host of Phantom Pirate Podcast. Woo! We discuss, <laughs> we discuss a lot of pop culture and TV and film. Uh, we cover mostly fantasy, the MCU, and genre TV. I will also be a new writer for the Claire and Jamie website, which covers the Outlander series. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, I am Dana Morgan. I am a cosplay event and con staff photographer. I'm also the executive producer and co-host of the Moana Nui podcast. I am the line producer and graphic designer for The Bop uh, with Karen, uh, the Yellow Power Ranger Karen Ashley. And I uh, do event planning and a whole lot more. Uh, <laughs> and um, for the bop, and um, you can catch that on Tuesdays on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And then the Mona New Podcast is on Thursday evenings at uh, 7 and 8.30 on Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and uh, YouTube. Awesome. And I, well, awesome is the appropriate word. I'm a child of the 80s, so I'm going to say that way too much, so I apologize <laughs> now. Uh, my name is Tara Burton. I'm a professor over at Kennesaw State University. I teach social media, and if you're participating in the swag and stick, there might be some hanging about. There are emojis. And I do podcasting, mostly. I do the geeky side and geeky with social. I've written a book on social media, and I have a sci-fi romance that's out there that my father-in-law is reading, and that has me very scared. <laughs> so the first question I want to ask you ladies is how did you get into digital media and why you chose to uh, open up your lives to the world? Oh man, okay, so it's it wasn't even something that I intended to monetize. I got into digital media, I mean, first of all, I'm a, I'm a millennial, so that's always just been a big part of my life, but I had just moved to Atlanta and I was kind of in a different place in my life where I'm trying to figure things out, it's a dark time, and I have a therapist who was telling me, hey, why don't you just get back into doing things that you really enjoy? I really love gaming, and I had been here for a short time and just had been working so much trying to get settled, so I took some time to just, you know, relax, do nothing but play games, and then a friend of mine was just like, hey, you know, you're, you're really good at like, like playing games, like, yeah, you should, you know, just stream it, just try it. So after the first stream, I kind of got comfortable and people really liked talking to me. They liked hearing me. I'm just like, I'm just being myself, cursing a lot and, <laughs> <laughs> and playing games badly, but it's the reactions and just the community and the vibe in general. So that kind of just turned into being kind of a passion and then monetizing it didn't actually, I mean, it was a thing, but it was something that happened after learning, you know, I have real support. Like I curated a community I was able to start a business. I have merch, all this stuff now. So it's like, yeah, this is different. And so, it's your day job. It's not just what you do, it's what you do. Yeah, this, this is my thing. I guest at cons, I model. I'm also, I'm a model for Thunder Thighs. Um, do side highs for queen size legs. <laughs> for queen size legs. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so it just turned out to be something that was more than a passion project and now I get to do it full time and my voice is trembling because it's like every time I think of it it's like oh my god this is a thing and now you're here. Yeah. Um, oh my god with the all time for show? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is a lot, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it's been a real blessing. Okay, so um, I am Gen X, so things are a little bit different for me. Digital media is kind of, it's still that new thing, and it feels weird to be the person to say, oh yeah, you know, what the kids are doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
But um, I've been podcasting off and on since 2006. I was a guest. Uh, I started out as a guest on the Sci-Fi Party Line podcast, which was another young black woman who was into sci-fi and fantasy, which back then there were not a lot of us around. So um, a friend of mine got me together with her and I was a huge Harry Potter nerd at that time. And she was kind of sort of curious about it, but didn't know a lot about it. So she had me on her show a couple of times to talk about it. And this was right around the t same time I started coming to Dragon Con. So she was like, oh, what's that? Oh, okay, let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. So um, I guessed it on her podcast several times, and then at some point, I just became a co-host. I don't know when that happened, but we started, <laughs> we started come, like she started introducing me as her co-host, we started talking about a lot more pop culture, and it was just, for me, having an avenue to actually talk about this stuff, because, it, I mean, if you're a true nerd, you know that a lot of times the people that are in your life, they really have no interest in what you're trying to say. They're like, I can't believe you're really into that like that. It was just one of those things where I was glad to have an outlet to be able to talk about this stuff. And then the pandemic happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, all of the conventions got taken away. Everything just kind of went away. And I was sitting in my house with no creative outlet to talk about the things that I love, you know. And um, she had been trying to get me to start my own podcast for years and I was just kind of scared to do it because, you know, you've heard of imposter syndrome. You think, mm -hmm. oh, there's somebody out there who's doing it better, who's doing it in, you know, in, in that sort of way. And so I, I dealt with that for a long time. And then finally I was like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Even if nobody else listens to it, at least I'm having fun. So that was how I got into that digital space. I've also been a blogger off and on for the last 11 years. I've written um, for HollywoodNews.com. I was an examiner back when Examiner was big. And like I said, I'm about to start writing for another uh, website. So it's just having the outlet to be able to be authentically me and be able to geek out about the things in the way that I do. Like people will tell you when I talk about things, I get excited, I get passionate. And to be able to have an outlet to be able to do that has been just one of the things that's like amazing for me. But I, I want to get to the level that she's at. Like, I want to be able to sit at home mm -hmm. and do this for a living. So I'm going to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> don't look at me. Don't look at me right now. Don't look at me in front of all of you. Don't look at me. <laughs> Pull the mask on. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, as far as myself, uh, my full-time job, I am an event planner, event coordinator, um, and executive assistant, so do everything. And with me being a photographer, I do photo uh, corporate photography too. And of course, uh, with my company, it's global, I was used to doing, uh, looking at ways to elevate content that we can stream to employees no matter where they are, they can see it. And um, end up being um, my co-host for the Morning New Podcast, um, I invite her to a December uh, community event that we did um, for the community and we, uh, it was focused on uh, children that are in um, shelters and things like that to kind of give them a day to just have fun and not think about it. And little did they realize every employee sponsored them. So at Christmas, they had Christmas gifts um, from Santa. Uh, so when she saw that, she was like, hey, um, I'm starting this show. Uh, would you like to come on as a guest co-host? I was like, sure, why not? Did that. She's like, can you come back again? Did that. Then I was like, yeah, you might as well just perform it. And um, then she had me to really do the same things I do at work. We have different segments that I looked at within the con community, what stuff that um, people be, are looking for. We have a person come on once a month to talk about indie projects um, that you should be on the lookout for. And um, because a lot of people are looking outside of the big three uh, comics that they can really enjoy. And then we even have a uh, a therapist that comes on to talk about different topics like grief and depression so people can understand if their loved one is going through those things what to look out for and and how you can support them versus making them clam up um and as i was i've been uh, of course doing that show for over two years and 
Karen Ashley, who I know from working with her at the con, she was like, I've seen your show. I would love to partner with you on a show I'm trying to do. I'm like, sure, yes, <laughs> I'll be happy to. <laughs> and so we have uh, the Bob that she has, and they talk about everything about uh, hot topics to the newest shows that's coming out, movies, everything else. And then I have another uh, show that I just recently just got asked about. Uh, so we got a top pricing uh, that they want me to be the executive producer for. So y'all may be hearing about that soon. Uh, but that's basically how I got into the digital world and, um, and it hasn't stopped yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually a combination of two of you. I am also a gamer and uh, me and my best guy friend played World of Warcraft together. And um, none of our friends understood the things that were coming out of our mouth mm -hmm. when we talked about it. So we just decided to have a podcast where we could talk all we wanted about it. And uh, so that's what got me started over 15, 16 years ago. I've been teaching and talking about blogs and podcasts for a few decades now. So, But gaming, it seems to be a gateway drug into <laughs> podcasting for many of us. Or streaming, which mm -hmm. I, I'm a Gen Xer as well. And I don't know about you, but camera. I'm still not over that. And microphone I'm good with, camera. Ooh, it not, takes some getting used to. Yeah. It does. I guess since I'm a cusp, I'm like the end of Gen X, beginning of millennial that I'm like in between. <laughs> okay, I'm far into the Gen X. But we'll move on now, won't we? So as women, and particularly you ladies as women of color, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had in digital media in terms of either expectations or stereotypes or just mountains that you've had to climb to be successful. We're gonna start at that end this time. Um, the one thing I have found um, doing digital media, uh, even on the photography side, because as a photographer, I always look for the people that most of the photographers are walking past when they're getting, um, getting pictures during the con. I, I'm going for the little kid that is wearing their first cosplay. This shy little girl um, that may be plus size, but put a lot of work, you can tell put a lot of work in that cosplay, but no one's taking the picture. I, it, it's one of those that I'd like to get the unseen seen. Uh, and the want to put new podcast, we focus on giving a platform for those that typically don't have a platform. And um, we get occasionally like, because we are on a public platform, so on public, uh, you're causing division by bringing up women, um, the stuff about women. And you're causing division by this. And I'm we're like, eh, delete, eh, delete. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's mainly that. And then, of course, you hear the, um, you know, well, if you're going to focus on, you know, women cosplayers and c call this for, you know, Black Fay Day or something like that, then what about, uh, a white Fay Day or a men's Fay Day. And it's like, this, it's already out there. Guys, you have 90% of the comics and every character out there. Let us, let women have their time. <laughs> so that's mainly what I hear. It's a lot of people that are comfortable in the norms and anybody that stretches outside those norms and bring it to the public eye. They, we, we see with the trolls online, the keyboard warriors that are very brave behind a keyboard but not in your face. So. <laughs> I think for us, um, because we do a lot of discussion and recaps of uh, a lot of pop popular cultural um, TV and film, you know, most of those things are still dominated by white audiences and by white characters and actors. And so when we discuss a lot of that, sometimes we do have to try to bring a different perspective to it because everyone on my podcast is African American. And we look at things that other people may not look at. Like mm -hmm. if you're a white person, you don't know what my black experience is. Or even for me as a biracial person, you don't know what my experience is. And so sometimes we do bring that into the podcast or into our discussions and you always have someone who gets offended by the things that we bring up. And the thing that we want people to understand is that once these things are seen as normal and they don't have to be focused on or brought up, that's the only time that we will feel like we are also part of the conversation and we are part of the space. But until then, 
when it still made a big deal that such and such got cast as the first black actor in such something. Mm -hmm. This person is the first black nominee for this award. Why are we still having first minority anything in 2022? And that's not just for black people, that's for LGBTQ as well. Mm -hmm. Why are we still doing first in 2022? So I think that's one of the biggest obstacles that we get because people don't like to hear us use our quote minority voices to talk about things in larger spaces. And you know, it's just one of those things where we are unapologetically black and we talk about it on our show. <laughs> and we just, you know, it's not anything that we're doing to to divide people, but there are other opinions out there other than our term, the white male patriarchy, and sometimes people need to hear that. So, snaps. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, I would say that some of the biggest hurdles that I face being plus size, being queer, being black and a woman would have to just be, yeah, the trolls and everything, but Sometimes I want to be in a space and not be perceived and just be like, okay, recognize me as a gamer, recognize me as a fan of something and not as all of these other labels too. Like when I want to bring it up, I'll bring it up, but also I want you to respect the fact that I am here on this subject and this matter doing this for my community, for content, whatever it is. And this is just a fun time. Not everything has to be politicized. My blackness, my fatness, it doesn't have to be a statement unless I actually want to make it a statement. Um, between that and then there are also moments where I don't think that people will focus on the subject if I'm trying to like promote something like, what was it? I did a partnership. I got sponsored by Epic Games to play Fortnite and one of the things that ended up happening was, okay, they were trying to have you not sexualize the characters because they bought, you know, Goku and Vegeta and all that into the game. Um, and it's just like, hey guys, can we just focus on this thing? And it's like a perfect example of, hey, I don't want to be sexualized all the time. When I put this bunny suit on and I'm, say, I'm like shaking my rear end and everything, I'm saying it like that because, you know, <laughs> I'm like an older person, uh, but like, I'm doing all this stuff, that's what I want to be perceived. Um, so yeah, between that and just being plus size, it's just like, I really just try to be, what do you call it, not a role model, I don't, I don't want to be a role model, I curse so much. Um, not that. Can just not on this panel. Just not on this panel. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know, I want to be a voice when I want to be a voice. Uh, that's basically it. I think that's the hardest thing probably for you since this is like what you do as your day job to be able to just be you sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like Opie is okay. I am Opie, but Opie isn't me. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Such a hard distinction. Uh, the first panel I was ever on for digital media was me and four white guys, and I just want to see how much we've changed and how much drag has changed. And it's just beautiful from my point of view to see the rainbow that we have. So I'm glad that y'all are fighting for that table and to make your voices heard. Yeah. So next question, and you get to start this time, you can oh, hide it in the middle. <laughs> sure. is, um, let's say there's a young lady out there that wants to get started in digital media. What would be, where would you tell her to start or where would you tell her to go? Oh, and you started that question with I me. know, unfair. <laughs> uh, but I have faith in you, my Gen X companion. <laughs> well, you know, um, for me, it was um, interesting because as a podcaster, you know, we're used to like just certain things like me having to learn this new digital space and, you know, the streaming and the live, you know, going live and all of this stuff, it, it can be very overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, especially if you are older or if you are Gen X, because a lot of the stuff that, you know, it, it's so weird because, you know, as, as kids, we always heard our parents talk about how the stuff that we did didn't make sense and make perfect sense to us, and now it's weird being on the other end of that. Because I look at certain things like Snapchat and TikTok, and sometimes I'm like, 
why do we even need those? It's only a few seconds long. But you see that those few seconds can have an impact mm -hmm. with people in a very short amount of time. Um, but as far as someone getting started, I would tell them that they need to do the research because there are some, there's so much digital media out there and everything is not for everybody, you know? So they need to know their level of comfort. And, you know, like you said, we put our lives on online for the world to see whether we're doing it under an alias or whether we're presenting our own self, but we need to, people need to be comfortable with what they put out there. So I would say that they need they need to do their research. You know, if you just want people to hear your voice, start with something like Spotify and just kind of go out from there because Spotify is pretty much everywhere now. Um, YouTube is also great because you have the opportunity to let people see what you're talking about. And this goes back to like with me, we started our podcast, Just Audio Only. We only started publishing our recorded videos maybe a few months ago and that's because one of the things people always tell me when I'm sitting on panels and when I'm having conversations is you can hear how a person feels in their voice but when mm -hmm. you can see the way that they react when you can see their reactions and as you mm -hmm. see I talk mm -hmm. with my hands a lot I make motions a lot I'm very animated when I have discussions sometimes the things that I say may not seem funny when you just hear it, but if you see my facial expressions, mm -hmm. it changes the whole co concept of what you're hearing. So I would tell that person, find out what you're comfortable with and then start start small, start with those and see how that works for you and then start branching out. Um, digital media is one of those spaces where you're always, always, always learning something new. Mm -hmm. And you can't be afraid of that. And I know there's a lot of people who are um, very hesitant about being on social media, very hesitant about those kind of digital spaces. But if this is something that you want to do, you have to learn to overcome that fear, those obstacles in order to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. I agree. That's my biggest problem is fear. Nina? Um, I, for me, I would say for anyone trying to get at one, what type of digital media you're trying to get in, whether it's photography, whether it's um, podcasting, and one of the other things, I'm also a voice actor. So it, if you're going in that direction, um, it it's really depends on that. So if you're looking on the photography side, I always tell people, you know, get familiar as, uh, let's say, do your research of the equipment. It, you don't have to buy ten thousand dollars worth of equipment i see so many people do that and they you know sign up for some classes get your basic equipment the basic kits learn how to use your camera first then you branch out into the fancier stuff because then you can do like sports uh, photography things like that on the podcast side same thing do your research what are you passionate about because you can talk about anything but we know from work if you if you don't like what you're doing it shows whether it's audio or video. And for my both podcasts, we're live. Uh, my one and we were live every Thursday is where we do a recording. And that's usually if we're at a con and the reception is crappy, we just record it and then hear it later. But at, all our episodes are live. Um, so people get to engage with us. We respond to the comments. We show them on screen. Um, then also, what is your budget for streaming? Because a lot of people don't know what doing a podcast, depending on how you want to go, it costs money. If you're trying to do multiple streams, you are trying to get a good mic, camera, all that's going to add up after a while. So figure out your budget, start slow. Get your, get your feet wet, get your, you know, see how it works and then pursue it from there. And the voice acting, I just tell people, a lot of times you find little scripts out there of different shows and things like that. Just practice, record them, keep doing that. And there's a lot of um, voice actors and um, groups on Facebook that will post things. Uh, both me and Opai is um, voice acting uh, a second time for a second part to a video game. We were in the first video game that came out in 2020. 
now we're recording for the new uh, second part of the game that's coming out soon. Uh, so, you know, you'll see that you let them know you're interested, you send in your demo of what they're asking for and give it a shot. Uh, of course, you're not gonna get everything, but the more you practice, the more you're honing your skills, you can, you know, find those opportunities to be able to do that. So that's my advice. <laughs> oh gosh, those are some really great answers. Um, like it's all prevalent, like regardless of the media, uh, you don't have to get, you know, the best equipment off the rip. Mm -hmm. um, research, obviously, Google, YouTube, ask, just ask your friend group. You'd be surprised, yes. like a lot of people are friends with others on Facebook, and they don't even know them like that. If you make a post, like, hey, does anybody know about this? People will come out the woodwork, mm -hmm. and they'll actually have information too. So some people in your circle, um, in terms of streaming and everything, just, you know, get your feet wet, do something that you want to do. Play a game you want to play first, uh, whether you have a community or not. Like, it's not like you're not there to entertain them, but you also want to entertain yourself because you want to enjoy the game, right? Um, yeah. And just go from there. Like, I didn't get a computer to actually stream on until this year. Mm -hmm. I've been playing on PlayStation. I've been a streamer for five years, right? Streaming on PlayStation for four out of five years, and this is the first time that I'm able to actually stream on a desktop. Before that, it was a laptop, but I slowly built my way up and I was like moving furniture around, jerry rigging like PlayStation cameras on boxes on boxes. <laughs> like, bro, I was hungry though. I wanted this. Yeah, it was also awesome. just like a fun thing to do in my spare time. Like as my community grew, I just felt like, okay, maybe I can do a little bit more. Maybe I can like make my budget a little bit bigger, like Dana was saying too. Um, in terms of like voice acting, definitely just look around, be on the lookout, scripts. I hate saying, oh, just Google it, because people are like, Google what? <laughs> uh, Google how? Google how? Please, there's a right way to Google. There's a right way to Google and a wrong way to Google, yeah. but like also the Facebook groups too. <laughs> um, I, I'm done this. Yeah, you're so, um, <laughs> you're awesome. I'll censor you. But um, like, just looking stuff up, um, in terms of modeling and like getting into like cosplay and getting into, because it is a form of you know media and everything and posting that stuff, there are cons that'll have applications on their websites for people that want to be guests, not just cons that are people or applications for people that want to be volunteers. Look that stuff up, and same with you know social media. You can reach out to the page and ask them like, hey, are you guys looking for models? Are you guys looking for this? Are you looking for brand ambassadors? Whatever it is, and they'll they'll give you the information. They'll give you the Google form, ask for like measurements or whatever they need, just to see if they can like fit you in. Um, you just gotta do the footwork. Mm -hmm. It it is it seems like it's intuitive, but sometimes it really isn't because you know you have to kind of go extra sleuth stalker mode to figure out how to get around all these avenues and find the right resources or the people you need to connect with. Um, so yeah, I think connections. By the way, we have a Discord server uh, with the digital media track, which I don't know off the top of my head, but I will drop it on our social media on Facebook and Instagram. Please follow um, Jesse's doing the social media this year. So, but it, they're great. You can ask any question, or if you just need to um, let off steam about something, it's a great place to do that as well. Um, I'm going to actually add to all these wonderful things. Think about your boundaries when you start. Like, do you want your real name out there? Yes. What about your partner? Do you have children? Think about, are you gonna talk about the children? How are you gonna to refer to them? Find out what your boundaries are from the beginning mm -hmm. so that you're not having to try to backtrack to, yes. to make that all out. Luckily, my husband, who is very much a ghost in social media, doesn't mind that he is not a ghost in my social media. Uh, and I never ask him that. So thanks, Shane, even though you're not here. <laughs> um, well, oh, so. Going off of that, my next question, and you get to start, are you ready? Oh gosh. Yeah, and this one's really <laughs> different for you in a way, because I think one of the most important things that came out of the pandemic was this idea of work-life balance. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us have work, and then we have this hobby that's like work, that we're also doing. For you, mm -hmm. you're doing it as your life, and so how do you make a balance between the princess time, and on time, and for you ladies, balancing all those 
and things that we're doing during our day jobs. Balance, what's balance? <laughs> I don't know, that's why I'm asking you, Brandy. <laughs> no, but listen, because I'm still learning to do that. Um, it's crazy because at one point I wanted my desk in my room because I, I finally could afford my own apartment. And I was like, no, I don't want that because I would just get out of bed, see my work right there. It has to be a completely separate room. Between that and just like also trying to take care of myself, like mental health and physically as well. I mean, because like it's a part of my brand and my business and all this other stuff, but it's a little bit harder to do it. I think one of the things that helps me balance would have to be, I don't want to say, oh, get burnt out because you know, that's not the right way to like go about trying to get into it. I have to schedule it. Um, I really do have to schedule it and try not to be hard on myself. And if it just turns out to be a day that's a flop and I spend more time taking care of me, then it's just a flop and then you adjust your schedule. I mean, if you're, I mean, for me in particular, since this is like my business and everything, I can change my schedule. I know not everybody gets to do that, so it's a little bit different. But the work-life balance aspect is, I end up doing a little bit of work every day, no matter what. And at some point, you're chipping away at those tasks and they all get done. So I guess it still is a form of work-life balance because at least it's getting done. It's slow, but it's gonna happen. But also, I'm not trying to like sit down and just do this whole thing right then and there, right now, unless I've got like a deadline or something, you know? Um, I hope that answered it, right? Sounds good to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, always pass the hot potato. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm still learning how to balance one of the things my uh, I have my oldest and my youngest they still live with me and they're always telling me mom you need to sit down you need to stop you need to just rest you need to stop doing stuff and you know especially for my generation we're always told that if we're not doing something we're being lazy mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you're not being productive like that is something that has been hard for me I'm 47 years old so there's there are certain things that I'm used to doing and have been doing wrong for a long time. And it's hard to get out of that mindset. But with um, balancing your regular work life, I, I, work in, I work in a school system. You know, I'm an administrative assistant. So there's a lot there. And then a lot of days I come home and I'm immediately back in my office at home and I'm editing and I'm, you know, scheduling social media and trying to do that. The only difference is for me, that doesn't feel like work because it's something that I'm actually enjoying doing. Like I like being able to put content out there. I like being able to hit, let my friends hear me talking about certain things because you know they may not get a chance to talk to me about it. And so that part of it is fun for me, but I do have to learn, hey, there has to be a limit. Um, one thing about me, I'm, I also suffer from chronic illness. There's no reason why I should be in a chair 16 hours of the day, but a lot of times I am because I'm really trying to get stuff out. But um, one of the things I've had to learn is that um, for some people, having things come out on a certain schedule, that works for them. For me, it doesn't necessarily work like that. We have a total of six people on my podcast team. Not all of us record together, but five of us are here in Atlanta, the other one is in California. So sometimes those hours may not work so that we can get a particular episode about a particular show out on a particular day. You have to learn to be flexible too and not be hard on yourself when you have to be. Um, you know, there are some weeks when we may put out four podcast episodes that week just because there's so much good stuff. Like I said, we cover a lot of fantasy. We cover all the MCU stuff. And so if you think about even just now, the current schedule, you have She-Hulk, you have House of the Dragon, the boys just went off. So we cover all of that stuff. So sometimes we'll put out a lot of content in one week. And then there are weeks when I'm sick and physically unable to do it, we may just put one episode out. You have to be okay with that. And then also you have to know that your audience will be okay with that too. Because if you overwork yourself to the point where you're not able to uh, produce the content, then what was the point, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just it's just trying to figure out what works best for you and then also not being hard on yourself when you're not able to do what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, as far as myself, um, I'm, like I said, my full-time job is in the corporate world and then I have my other world. 
uh, in the corporate world, it is having now work-life balance is a false narrative. Now, we go by it more, and I uh, go by it also at home, is a flex schedule. You flex your schedule accordingly, but at the same time, very cautious of your mental and physical health and things like that. So it's one of those, and all my friends know, if it is not on the calendar for me, it is not happening. <laughs> I will have people like, hey, I would love for you to be a guest on my podcast tonight. I am sorry, but no, I don't have availability on my calendar. Uh, but please send me an email, and uh, we will look at the calendar and schedule accordingly. But it's one of those that you have, and I tell people the biggest part is learning, putting your strength in your nose. Because a lot of people, it's like, oh, because this is my friend, this is someone I know from the con, they need my help. And we give, we push back our line further and further and further and further. That, to the point that we're we're asking ourselves why we're so exhausted. So you have to be firm with your no. If you know this is supposed to be your time that you are supposed to spend with your family, supposed to go on vacation, give that no. It's like, unless they're about to pay you some mega million money and asking you to take your time, take you only have you. And, and unless those people are gonna help take care of you when you're down, you're, you're sick, you you're hurting, don't, you know, just flex your schedule according to you and how you feel and everything. Because if, just like uh, was said before, you don't have to have it, as, you may be one that likes set schedules and that works with your flex, but then you may have to adjust based on your health, your family, and everything else. Just be willing to flex, because a lot of people, they're very uncomfortable with flexing. I wrote it down. I thought it was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Strength in your nose. So um, for me, the biggest thing has been I would always have a to-do list. And my to-do was always at the bottom, like record my podcast. And one day I went, okay, this does not work for me anymore. I have to make me a priority. Yes. And that's helped me find work life balance. Not that I have it. I'm a teacher. A teacher never has work life balance. <laughs> but at least now I'm like, okay, that I do what feeds my soul and making sure that I make that a priority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'm a firm believer in a to-do list. Oh, listen, my whiteboard calendar, same thing. Scribbles everywhere, all the time. Paper, I'm just everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to find the perfect system. So, uh, by the way, are you available to be on a podcast next week? We'll talk to you. Okay. <laughs> all of you are gonna get emails. You can ignore me and that's perfectly fine. So we're at 310, and I'm interested in what y'all want to know about. So who has a question? Um, a couple of questions. You said that you wrote a book on social media. What I, is that? It's called Socially Engaged, The Author's Guide to Social Media. It is mostly outdated because anything mm -hmm. written on social media is outdated when it publishes. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. But I have a new book coming out this fall called Socially Evergreen, where I'm attempting to write a social media book that doesn't get dated. Wish me luck. <laughs> and uh, oh, I also. Oh, oh there's the oh, end. Have a mic. Hey, 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 if you're not comfortable with a mic, shout it out. We'll receive it. Uh, okay, I don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, I kind of a little bit divergent, but you said that you had merch. If do you want to just give a brief synopsis, how did you go about getting that? Like being able to set it up. Oh, just setting up like the the sites and everything, or just Correct. also getting yeah. all the input. Like, like your distributors, like uh, who you get to manufacture, how you decide to do oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. So, oh, speaking of merch, you guys want to buy some, by the way, I have it in my hand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you want to support your cause, I got stickers. Um, but okay, so seriously, uh, I, it took a while. I was just talking with my community, and I always thought, like, oh, I don't know, but I didn't start, I didn't launch merch until, like, this past year, and I just, looked around, shopped around, asked friends that are vendors and have, you know, sold, you know, t-shirts and everything before, just getting feedback because you want to think about processing fees. You also want to consider membership fees that come with websites. Like I'll use BigCommerce um, and I will get my shirts made by Printful um, and look at the turnaround time, the quality as well, because some places won't give you mock merch or even give it to you for free or give you a discount. Um, and with stickers, there's like a couple, well, stickers in particular, just as an example, that one, 
there were like a lot of different uh, websites that I could have chose from, but I heard there was just like poor quality, like always a couple of different, like a, what do you call it, misprints on them. Um, I would definitely recommend looking into Facebook groups too. Like there's this one that's called Vendors of the World, or it's just like a bunch of people that go to different cons and have vended and had tables and stuff and get information from them. Or if you're at a con already and you're in the dealer's room, just ask people, ask them in their face, like, hey, what did you just turn it off with? Like one person, I was a guest at Queen City uh, last month or the month before last, and I was just walking around looking at other people's boots, and one person had gotten a pack of shirts from Shein, and they got their own printer at home or like somewhere else, and just put the logos and everything on themselves. And like designing-wise, Canva, and do camp, or you can commission somebody. And like when you commission, it must depend on the pricing. There are also some uh, artists that will have like commercial fees too if you plan on selling merch. So they'll, you know, there'll be like a percent increase too to consider. But yeah. Yeah. I think it's a really big jump, but it's one that can make a difference in terms of affording to be able to do what we do. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. Like that, that's a big commitment because also you gotta consider. If you're going to have someone ship it for you, or if you're going to ship it, figure out if you want to do a flat rate or not, or if it's going to be like by weight or anything. Um, it's, it's a lot of stuff. I, it's not for the faint of heart being a business owner. It's definitely not. Like you got to ease into that. Pick one thing. Get one item that you want to sell. See how it does. Go from there. Yeah. Good advice. Other question. Somebody be brave. Yay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, super oh, brave. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the question is kind of like, like I guess especially for you, like, is like if you could go back and start, like you know how you say you like someone told you, hey, stream, and then it like progressively turned into a business. If you could go back and start, like I'm at the like crossroads of now. It's like, do I want to like make a brand and before I start putting out my content, or do I want to start like throwing content out there, seeing how people feel about it before I start to like make the brand, like get logos, stuff like that, like company name like I'm trying to figure out which road do I want to go do I want to see like people are receptive first or do I like um, start cultivating a brand first so uh, I kind of feel like I mean I get why you would want to like do the alternate of making sure other people are going to be receptive and everything your brand kind of comes as you you know put your content out mm -hmm. it, it becomes this thing like the more you put out already and you see people interacting and everything and how you respond, you're going to become known for something in some way, shape or form. So it's going to make itself, but is your question a matter of if you want to like what in, invest in like all of the things that would come with the content creator life first, like money wise beforehand or, or moving into it slowly? Is that, well, see, that kind of goes into my second question. I was like <laughs> editing and like learn should, should I learn that skill like I like I want to start putting out YouTube videos so like should I like invest in like a team like or should I just like make it my baby and learn the skills I need to get it at least off the ground I think it depends on what your comfort level is um for our YouTube videos right now um and this goes back to what Dana was saying as, as far as equipment and costs we do very simple. I have a Blue Yeti microphone and I record on Zoom. And the good thing about recording on Zoom, like I said, because we're all in different areas, even though five of us are in Georgia, we're like kind of all over the place. You can do your separate audio channels on Zoom and when you export them, it makes it a little bit easier to edit. I ended up learning how to do it um, when I was on Sci-Fi Party Line podcast because at one point, um, the person who was over that cat, she was in school and she didn't think she was going to be able to continue and she was like, hey, I would really like you to take over this if I have to pull out. So I just started learning on my own just to kind of get an idea of what she did. And then when I started the podcast for myself, I just kind of went in and just kind of kept with the skills that I knew. There are other programs out there that make the editing process easy. Um, for people, but it's, it's what you're comfortable with, especially because some technology is very simple and some technology is very, you know, very complex. Mm -hmm. But um, our YouTube videos, when I put those up, <clears throat> I just put them up for the most part unedited, unless there's something I absolutely have to take out, 
just because, again, um, the people who listen to our show, they like seeing the raw footage because, you know, that stuff is not scripted. So we put it out like that, but I'm planning to get into more of the streaming and Everybody keeps telling me I need to go ahead and start doing the TikTok thing, so I'm going to try to do that. But So I, so it's, it's one of those things with me, too. Like, the, um, my podcast will be two years old at the end of this month, so it's something I'm still learning. So, um, you know, it, it just depends. Like, I don't, I don't have the budget to hire a team. And then also, eventually, I want to learn these skills and be able to use this so that I can pull out of a full-time job and be able to do this on my own and possibly do it for other people and make a living that way. So that's one of the reasons that I'm learning to do it. So, but yeah, and then also, too, the thing with a team is that you can get somebody to edit your content for you, but unless they know you inside and out, mm -hmm. you're gonna look at that and you may say, you know what, I would have done this differently, I would have done mm -hmm. that differently. And nobody, especially when it, when you're dealing with people, everybody who's on my podcast team, I've been friends with for years. The, the, there's one on there, I've been friends with him for 30 years. So it's just a matter of trusting other people with yeah. your team mm -hmm. and presenting you and your team the way that you want to be presented. Mm -hmm. And I just don't know if I feel comfortable letting somebody else do that right now. Now, as far as for both of your questions, um, first question, I'm, I'm putting my uh, little legal hat on too. Um, <laughs> your brand, your name, you definitely want to capture that because as you grow it, if someone else has it, you can't get it back. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are planning you have the thinking about expanding beyond that, having a website, whatever. Go ahead and capture that. Yeah. Uh, you see that with corporations, you see that with all kinds of businesses because if someone captures that website address, you can't get it unless they decide to sell it for you and you have to pay the price they want it for you to set buy it for. So, whatever you're, you have as your concept of what your brand is, your logo, your logo can always evolve. You see that with even corporations. But what you're going to call your um, your podcast, whatever you're going to have, you you do whatever works for you, what represents you well. Get that locked down. That way, no one else can take it. Because especially we see that with creators that take off, then they find out someone else had taken that name, and now they they can't do anything about it, and they have to change their name because someone else has has that name. So I definitely recommend that. And as everyone else say, just slowly build your stuff. Then think of yourself, what I prefer to be live, what I prefer to record and then post it. That will also help you determine how you want to do it. For us, uh, we use the platform StreamYard. You do, uh, they have a free one that you can stream to one outlet, but you can pay to do multiple outlets and it streams simultaneously to all of them. So that allows us to make sure we get the people that are more on uh, Twitter, they can see our content. Because uh, not everybody goes on YouTube, not everybody is on Facebook. Uh, but you want, we want to have a variety that people can do. And then later on, we take, it also separates the audio for us. So we can download that and put it on the auto um, podcast streams, um, stream yard. Twenty, I think it's twenty-five dollars a month. Yes. Like that. But it will also record for you, so you don't even have to go live. You can just use it. As yes. A so you place. can you can pre-record or you can go live. Uh, you can go even go live on LinkedIn. All of that. So that's part of that research portion. See what you're comfortable with. And for Moana Nui, it's just two of us. And I I do the line production. I get everything scheduled. I I use OneNote because my co-host is in the DMV, and that is her way to see everything that I have scheduled, what questions I have put in there already, and it works simultaneously that we both can see what each other's doing before we go on live and everything. So you just gotta find what your fit is, and then just slowly go from there, see, you know, see what free options are there. Um, I edit our videos when we do pre-record and have to edit it. Um, I, I use Fulamore. Uh, they have a um, platform that is 
great for people who are starting to learn how to edit that you're not gonna have too many difficulties with that one. And a lot of times, you know, at, it, and with StreamYard, I can upload my pre-recording, schedule it, and don't worry about it. And then it goes live for me. So like while I've been here this weekend, so Thursday, I didn't have to worry about it because my content went live. <laughs> <laughs> because I went ahead and scheduled recordings that I knew because I wouldn't be here that it could we could still have content going out when I'm not um, available. What is it called? It's called, uh, I, I'll, I'll write it down for you and then you can look after the site and then they give a trial. They can try it for 30 days for free and then after that you can pay for the subscription for it. I was also gonna suggest you could do hit film too and you can mm -hmm. do that one for free. I actually, it's like you can only do it from one particular computer uh, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. so one email, one computer and everything, but it's really good. I used to come for my videos. I don't have videos, so listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> so we have time for one more question. If anybody's brave and wants to step up to our center mic, we'd love to have you. Come on down. Yay. Love the hat. Thank you. This is actually kind of hodgepodge uh, last minute. So. Um, I am a streamer as well, but I don't do gaming, I do art. And uh, we do a live stream uh, twice a week, once on Wednesday, once on Friday. Wednesday is Artapalooza, where we bring in all kinds of artists from all over the world. And my question to you is, how do you keep things fresh? How do you, um, even though you've been doing your podcast for two years, what elements do you change? What el you know? How do you know when to change it? What what's your vibe? Where do you bring it to the next level? I'm gonna be honest. I listen to my audience. Yes, thank you. Um, I have a a few of my real life friends are very very loyal listeners, and I bounce ideas off of them. Like, hey, we're thinking about doing this. We're thinking about doing that. Um, just for an example, when we first started, some of our podcast episodes would go two to three hours because again we're we're reviewing and recapping tv shows and we do it episode by episode so at the beginning i thought maybe we're take maybe we're talking too long because you are talking about on average we have four people on an episode that's a lot of opinions especially if it's a if it's a show where there needs to be a lot to discuss um, so at some point I thought about cutting the recaps out like okay you know what chances are if they're listening to this they've already watched it so why do we need to recap and I got very very emphatically do not cut out the recaps because sometimes when people are listening to podcast episodes especially if we're recapping we may mention a scene that they forgot was in the show mm -hmm. and I was told please don't take those out yeah. Um, just yesterday, uh, something else uh, that was brought to me was that um, they, they like that we're spontaneous. You know, again, we're, we're not scripted. So there are some times when we may have a certain thing to say, and Mike may say something that makes me go, oh, wait, I yeah. just thought about something. <laughs> so they like the spontaneity. So, I mean, for me, that's, that's really it. Even in my everyday conversations, like what you see here, this is how I am 24 seven. I'm like this all the time. I can be like this about work. Mm -hmm. I can be like this about, you know, my fandoms. And it's just a matter of, for me, listening to what people want. If someone says, hey, I heard your episode, but maybe such and such, like, um, I don't like the way this was said because it might've come off offensive, even though we might not have meant it that way. We go back and look at that. So really for me, it's about listening to my audience. Yes. I definitely agree about um, definitely listening to your audience because we make sure at least twice a year we poll our audience. Like, what things would you like to hear? What things you like? And uh, one of them was like, hey, we love that you did this panel, uh, which we call Moana Nui After Dark, um, where you get, uh, you know, adults and we talk about the stuff. And one of them was um, uh, for Disney. I mean, there's a lot of adults that are huge Disney fans. And they were like, we love this to be a reoccurring thing. So we started making it a reoccurring thing and asking those panelists to come back and just discuss. And we get into the deep of it. I mean, we've done a conto, we're turning red, all that. Um, but 
the audience wanted to hear more of that. But then at the same time, they also let us know, hey, um, we would love to have some development stuff so I can know how to better me, not only as a, you know, getting into work fields, but also into my own business. So we partnered up with uh, CAPWA, which is a nonprofit that is focused on uh, uh, professional development for women. And they come on each month with a panel of professionals that help answer the questions of people from the audience. Uh, so last week we had them talking about individual development and they gave a whole segment on how to ask for raise. And it was like, people were like, okay, so my boss is like this. And then they're like, okay, here we go. And then they got the real talk from people that are president CEOs and stuff and they got those answers. So definitely talking to your audience. They're gonna be, because they're the ones who are supporting you. They're gonna give you that guidance of what to keep them there. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna add from a personal perspective, when you start not wanting to get on the air, it's time for a change. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And I just went through that and I um, changed and dropped my co-host and I'm doing something on my own now. And I actually wanted to get behind the mic again and I hadn't felt that way. And I think that's a real like your self check. Mm -hmm. That's a good self check. Yes. I, and that I, I agree with that when you're not when you're not inspired to create whether you're talking about pop culture TV shows or you're doing your art if you don't feel it they're gonna feel it exactly yeah. so I just um, I'm trying to transition from one art form for me personally into another art form and it's been a long struggle and I'm getting a lot of good reviews from the people that are there and I'm just wondering how do I, you know, change that to be more people and reach that. So I figure, well, if you guys can guide as far as like listening to your audience and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, but attracting a newer audience as well. Um, it's hard for me to talk about it because it's it's like. Without you guys knowing the nuances, like no, we know I, I, yeah. I understand. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, so for me, when I started my podcast, one of, I had several mm -hmm. other people who have very successful podcasts. They told me from the bat, they said, "Do not expect mm -hmm. to get a large audience, even though you're coming yeah. from another yes. podcast. A lot of people won't follow you, you know, because they'll for some people. For some people, okay, if I started with you here." And you branch out on your own, even though that group is like, hey, go listen to her on her podcast, they kind of feel disloyal sometimes. Yeah. So you won't keep your audience. Um, a lot of people told me when you start a new podcast, it can take it can take years before you see a substantial <clears throat> growth in your audience. And that is something that I am finding we're kind of at a plateau right now. That's where I'm keep, at. It's like plateaued it. right at 2K and I'm yeah. like, okay guys. <laughs> see, we, see we, haven't even got, we haven't even gotten there. And like I said, we've been doing it for two years, but I don't do it for the numbers. Mm -hmm. I do it because it, this is fun people. for me. This yeah. is like, this, mm -hmm. this gives me like when I come home from the day to day of my job, this is what brings me joy to be able to talk about this stuff with my friends and to have fun. Um, the other thing is um, put yourself out there more. Like one of the things that I love, I you know I've been doing panels here at Dragon Con for eleven years now. For the first maybe four or five years, I was just on the YA lit track. Then I started kind of reaching out more like, okay, you know what? Maybe I should try this, maybe I should try that. And you can grow your audience that way. Yes. And after every convention I do now, I, I see an upsurge in yes. my listeners because people are like, oh, I really like what you said on this panel and I want to hear more of that. Mm -hmm. So put yourself out there in more spaces. If you are an artist, put yourself out at different events where you can showcase who you are and what yes. you are and talk to people. Networking is very important mm -hmm. because you know what? Somebody in this audience may not, they may not want to listen to a pop culture podcast, but they may have a friend who's looking for a new pop culture podcast yes. and they can pass that information along. So just always put yourself out there and just look for different ways to, to kind of, you know, show who you are. Yeah, everything that she was saying, but then also use social media to help you. Uh, a lot of people will use book, um, one less than one minute clips from their uh, show to put on TikTok. And it'll be something that's really interesting that you may be chatting while you're doing your art. And they clip that and everybody's like, oh, I wanna hear more of that. And then they go to your link 
to follow you so they can be part of it. But it's stuff like that. You, you, everything that uh, she mentioned, but also using Instagram, using all those to just do little reels and stuff just to give people a taste and have them want and more. Right, and that's why I'm gonna start utilizing YouTube Shorts since I've now um, made it where you can take clips of your own content and make a short content mm -hmm. out of it. So that's what I'm gonna start doing after I get home from here. That's what I'm gonna start doing. People were telling me, you need to I, put your stuff on TikTok. Like, oh, well, I, I had to put, I just started a new job and so I had to get everybody ready before I left because I'm the only one that does my job. So I was busy doing that. So yeah, it is just now, Thank you so much. that. So thank you for your information. I appreciate you. And feel free to come up and talk with us. We are two minutes over. So before somebody comes in here with a cattle prod in front of me, <laughs> I know, I'm not taking that for the team, lady. Yeah. <laughs> so, my favorite princess here. Start off here and tell everybody where they can find you next, where you are, and all that kind of good stuff. All right. So next on my big adventure, we got accepted to TwitchCon. So I will be Yay. going there with my friend Jan Bagas Cosplay and Bendy. So I'm pretty lucky to get the chance to do this. This is only my third time being a vendor. Um, That's fabulous. Do you want socials? Or? Yes, tell these people where to find you. Okay, so you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, at the O5 Princess. Yeah. Awesome, Brandon. Oh. Awesome, awesome. Um, so you can find me online. I am at fandomhybrid.com. That is our podcast on all our social medias. We are at Fandom Hybrid. Um, here at DragonCon, I will be doing the Discovery of Witches panel later on this evening. But you can also find my full schedule for the convention on my social media. Um, Panel-wise, uh, once DragonCon is over, I will be at the Conjuration Con here in Atlanta in November. I will be doing a few panels there as well. Uh, for myself, uh I have a panel uh, later today at 5.30 p.m. for Producer's Guide to Digital Media, so I will be part of that panel. So please uh, come and check us out uh, later on today. Um, I also have a couple virtual panels that is going on through the diversity and special fiction track that they have going on that's streaming through their Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube also. Um, let's see, for the next thing, um, of course, I said I'm st I, I do photography staff, so my next con will be uh, Anime Week in Atlanta. Uh, so I am a, I'm a staff photographer for there uh, since 2016. And um, then after that, I will be in November in Orlando for Ranger Stop Orlando. Uh, for those that are Power Ranger fans and pop culture fans, mm -hmm. nice. I will be there um, Ranger Stop Live. So we'll be streaming live through uh, Ranger Stop's uh, social medias that you get to see interviews with several of the guests and stuff. So I'll be down there in November um, streaming live. And then of course you can, um, if you're interested in photography and my photography side, you can find me as Danique, D-A-N-I-Q-U-E, events on Facebook, um, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, uh, and Moana Nui, Moana, like in the movie, Nui is N-U-I podcast on all platforms, and then The Bop, uh, that's B-O-P, uh, with, uh, like I said, the show with Karen Ashley. Uh, you can follow us on the different social medias there too, to keep up to date on those episodes um, with Karen and um, her co-host. So that's how you can find me. And I'm Tara Burton, you can find me at taraburton.com. I do the geeky side and geek meets social, and I only agreed to marry my husband because I could get my website name. Um, <laughs> I was really good. I told him the day I really committed to him was the day I let my former maiden name uh, URL go. Uh, <laughs> so you can find me at 5.30 today, but go to her panel, not mine. I'll be talking about social media advertising on the EFF track, and I'll be at Multiverse in October. Yes, that's when that is. And it's been awesome having you all here today for the Awesome Women in Digital Media Volume 4. <laughs>